He came sat on the cold bare floor of her husband's hut, her swollen belly rising and falling with each shallow breath. Tears rolled down her cheeks as she clutched the small wooden idol of the Annie, the goddess of fertility, close to her chest. Her heart was heavy, burdened by fear and the weight of a terrible accusation. You have betrayed the gods, Kim. The village chief's deep voice had thundered earlier that day. His words echoed in her mind like the beat of a war drum. Betray the gods? How could she, a simple farmer's wife, betray the gods? Her husband, Obina, had stood silently by the chief's side, his face hard and unreadable. The same man who had once loved her fiercely now refused to meet her eyes. She is carrying an abomination, screamed Nwany, the village medicine woman, pointing a nerd finger at Nkem's belly. It all began three months ago when the yam harvest had failed. For the first time in 20 years, Umokwe's field had yielded no food and the villagers were desperate. The elders blamed the drought, but the younger men whispered about curses and hidden sins. It wasn't long before the whispers turned into shouts and the shouts turned towards Kim. They say you went to the forbidden forest. Obina had whispered to her one evening. Did you? Kim? No, she had said, her voice trembling. But even as she denied it, she saw doubt in his eyes. Now, she sat alone in the hut, listening to the sound of footsteps outside. She knew what was coming. The villagers would not rest until they had punished her. The next morning, Nkim was dragged from her hut by a group of angry villagers. Their voices filled the air like the buzzing of angry bees. She must confess, someone shouted. She brought the curse upon us. The village square was packed with men, women and children, all of them eager to see the accused and came, her face streaked with tears, clutched her belly protectively as she was forced to her knees before the elders. Chief Okoro sat in the center, his staff of authority gleaming in the sunlight. Beside him was Nwany, the old medicine woman whose word carried great weight. Obina stood a few steps away, his arms crossed over his chest. His face remained unreadable, but Nkem could see a flicker of youth in his eyes. Nkem, wife of Obina, Chifokoro began, his voice booming. You are accused of committing an abomination against the gods. Do you deny that you went into the forbidden forest? I did not go there, Nkem cried, her voice cracking. I am innocent. Mwany stepped forward, her bony hands clutching a staff adorned with feathers. The spirits do not lie, she hissed. The child in her womb is cursed. If we do not act, the entire village will perish. Momo spread through the crowd like white fire. The villagers feared the spirits more than anything and Nwanyi's word struck terror into their hearts. We cannot allow her to live among us, Nwanyi continued. She must be sent to the gods for judgment. What does that mean? Kim cried, panic rising in her chest. It means, Shifokoro said gravely, that you will be buried alive. If the gods find you innocent, they will spare your life. If you are guilty, your death will lift the curse from our land. The crowd erupted in a mix of gasps and cheers. Nkem's heart pounded in her chest. Buried alive? Her hands instinctively went to her belly. How could they condemn her and her unborn child without proof? That night, Nkem sat in a small mud hut where she had been locked to await her punishment. Her body trembled with fear, but her mind raised with thoughts of escape. The door creaked open and Obina stepped inside. For a moment, neither of them spoke. Then Nkem broke the silence. How can you let them do this to me? She whispered, her voice heavy with pain. Obina sighed deeply, his face shadowed in the dim light of the oil lamp. The village is starving, Kim. They need someone to blame. But you know I am innocent, she said, tears streaming down her face. You know I didn't go to the forbidden forest. How can you let them kill your child? Obina turned away, his shoulders slumping. What can I do? If I speak against the elders, they will accuse me of being part of the cause. Then you are a coward, Kim spat, her voice trembling with rage. Obina flinched, but he said nothing. He left the hut without another word, leaving in came to her despair.
The next morning, the villagers gathered at the edge of the forest. A deep pit had been dug in the red earth and the game was let to eat. Her hands tied behind her back. The drums began to beat. A slow, mournful rhythm that echoed in her chest. Mwanyi danced around the pit, chanting incantations and sprinkling white chalk on the ground. The gods are watching, she proclaimed. Let her judgment be swift and just. Game was forced to stand at the edge of the pit. She looked down into the darkness below, her heart pounding. Please, she begged, turning to the crowd. I am innocent. Spare my child. But her words fell on deaf ears. The villagers began to push her into the pit. But just as her foot slipped on the edge, a voice rang out. Stop! A man stepped forward from the crowd. He was tall and muscular with a face withered by the years of hardship. His clothes were simple but his presence commanded attention. I am a Gene, a traveler from Umweze, he said, his voice steady. I have come to this village seeking shelter but I cannot stand by and watch this injustice. The crowd murmured in confusion. Who was this man to challenge their customs? The gods do not demand innocent blood, a Gene continued. If this woman is truly guilty, let the gods prove it without the hand of man. Chief Okoro frowned, his grip tightening on his staff. Who are you to question our ways? I am a man who values truth, Gene said firmly. If you bury her alive and she dies, what proof will you have of her guilt? But if you leave her fate to the gods without interference, they will show their will. The crowd began to murmur again, this time with uncertainty. Very well, Chief Okoro said after a long pause. We will give the gods seven days to show their judgment. But if no sign comes, she will still face the pit. Game was spared the pit, but her fate remained uncertain. The villagers locked her in a small hut at the age of the village. She was to be watched day and night with strict orders not to leave. They believed the gods might send a sign to confirm her guilt or innocence within seven days. Inside the hut, Game sat on the cold floor her hands resting on her swollen belly. My child, she whispered, her voice shaking. We will survive this. Outside, the villagers murmured their doubts. Some believed Ekene's suggestion was wise, while others thought it delayed the inevitable. The drums of judgment had only paused, not stopped. On the first night, a strong wind swept through the village. Ropes were ripped from huts, and the people huddled together, praying for protection. Some saw this as a sign of Ekene guilt why others believed it was nature's rot on the second day a child in the village fell ill with a strange fever one quickly blamed in games abomination this is what happens when we hesitate she warned the villagers the ghosts are angry but Ekene remained steadfast have you no patience he said to the crowd if the ghosts wanted her dead would they not strike her themselves by the fourth day in game strength was draining she had been given little food and water and her body ached from sitting on the hard floor yet her spirit refused to break that night she prayed silently she of my ancestors if i have sinned forgive me if i am innocent fight for me save my child as she closed her eyes she thought she heard a faint whisper like a breeze passing through the hut it was soft but comforting as though something unseen was standing by her side on the sixth day Chaos erupted in the village. A group of hunters returned from the forbidden forest with shocking news. We found footprints near the sacred tree. One of them cried, and we saw charms scattered on the ground. The villagers gasped. No one was allowed near the sacred tree, and it was believed to be the home of powerful spirits. It was not in Kim, the hunter added quickly. The footprints were too large. It must have been a man. Suspicion turned like a knife among the villagers. For months, they had been convinced of Nkem's guilt, but now there was evidence pointing elsewhere. Ekene stepped forward. You see, she is not the cause of your suffering. Someone else has offended the gods. The crowd murmured uneasily. If it wasn't Nkem, then who? That night, Obina visited Nkem's hut for the first time in weeks. There was no anger or fear in his eyes. Instead, he looked broken. Nkem, he said, kneeling before her, I have wronged you. 
She stared at him, her face pale and weary. What do you mean? Obina lowered his head. It was me. I went to the forbidden forest. In came gasped, her heart pounding. You? Why? I was desperate, he confessed. When the yams fell, I sought help from a diviner in another village. He told me to leave an offering at the sacred tree, but I was too ashamed to tell anyone. When the harvest fell again, I didn't know what to do. I let them blame you because I was afraid. Game's hand trembled as she listened. You let me suffer for your sin? Tears streamed down Obina's face. I was a coward, but now I will make it right. On the seventh day, Obina Obina gathered the villagers in the square with Ekene standing by his side. He confessed everything. I was the one who went to the forbidden forest, he said, his voice shaking. Nkem is innocent. She has suffered because of my cowardice. The villagers were stunned. Some shouted in anger while others whispered in disbelief. You have brought shame upon us all, Chifokoro road. You will face the God's judgment. But before they could seize Obina, a deafening clap of thunder echoed across the village. The skies darkened and rain began to pour. A heavy cleansing rain that soaked the earth. It is the God's answer, Ekene said, his voice calm but firm. They have accepted his confession. The cause is lifted. The villagers fell to their knees, weeping and thanking the gods. Obina was sentenced to exile for his actions, but in game's name was cleared. The village elders publicly apologized to her. Weeks later, Nkem gave birth to a healthy baby boy. She named him Chisum, meaning God is with me. Though her life had been forever changed, Nkem found strength in her survivor. She became a voice of reason in the village, reminding them of the dangers of fear and blind judgment. And Ekene, the traveler who had saved her life, stayed in Umoegwe. Together, they rebuilt what has been broken, not just for Nkim, but for the entire village. The rain continued for days, washing away the dust and tension that had plagued Umoegwe for months. The land seemed to breathe again, and soon the villagers noticed new growth sprouting in their fields. It was a sign of hope, but for Nkim, healing her spirit would take much longer. As the days turned into weeks, she avoided the village square where whispers and stares still followed her. Instead, she focused on her son Chisum, whose cries and laughter brought her solace. Ekene visited often, helping her repair her heart and teaching her skills to become self-sufficient. He never spoke of her husband, nor did he pressure her to trust him completely. He simply remained present, offering her the quiet strength she needed. Months later, Obina returned to the village unannounced. His exile had been cut short when news of the good harvest reached the elders. They believed his punishment was sufficient as the gods had showed mercy. Nkem was sitting outside her heart, grinding millet when she saw him approach. He looked thinner, his clothes worn, and his face lined with regret. For a moment, they simply stared at each other. I heard the harvest was good, Obina said, his voice hesitant. Yes, Nkem replied curtly, not stopping her work. Obina knelt before her, his eyes fixed on the ground. I have come to beg of forgiveness. Nkem paused, her hands trembling slightly. You let me suffer for your sin, Obina. You let them call me a curse, bury me in shame, and nearly kill your child. I know, he said, his voice breaking. Every day of my exile, I thought about what I did. I was wrong, Nkem, and I will regret it for the rest of my life. She looked at him, her expression unreadable. Regret won't undo the pain. No, but I can spend the rest of my life trying to make it right, he said, tears in his eyes. Nkem sighed deeply. Forgiveness is not something. I can give you today, Obina. Maybe not ever, but for the sake of Chisum, I will not stand in your way if you wish to be part of his life. Obina nodded, grateful for even this small mercy. In the months that followed, Obina worked tirelessly to prove his sincerity. He helped Nkem rebuild her farmland and spent hours with Chisum, earning the boys jiggles and trust. The villagers, too, treated Nkem differently. They sought her counsel on matters of farming and the family, seeing her as a woman who had survived great trials and emerged stronger. Ekene, however, remained a quiet but steady presence in her life. While Obina worked to repair the damage he had caused, Ekene's friendship grew into something deeper. He never pushed Nkem, but his respect and care for her were evident in everything he did. One day, while walking back from the river, Nkem found herself alone with Nkem. The air was cool and the sound of birds filled the silence between them. 
Do you ever think about leaving this place? Ekene asked suddenly. Nkem stopped, looking at him with curiosity. Why would I leave? This is my home. I know, he said, his voice soft. But sometimes I wonder if you would find peace somewhere else away from the memories and the people who doubted you. Nkem smiled faintly. Peace isn't a place, Ekene. It is something you carry inside you. And I am still learning how to carry mine. Ekene nodded, understanding her words and if you ever need someone to help you carry it i will be here her heart warmed at his words but she said nothing letting the moment pass in silence years passed and the village of umuegui thrived once again the story of Nkem's trial and survival became a cautionary tale, a reminder of the danger of fear and the power of truth. Chisom grew into a strong, kind-hearted boy who adored both his mother and father. Though Nkem never fully reconciled with Obina, they maintained a civil relationship for the sake of their son. As for Ekene, he remained by Nkem's side, a constant source of support and friendship. Over time, their bond deepened and Nkem began to open her heart to the possibility of love again. One evening, as the sun set over the village, Ekene knelt before her with a simple carved bracelet in his hands. Nkem, he said, his voice steady, you are the strongest woman I have ever known. I don't want to replace your past, but I want to build a future with you. Will you allow me to be part of your life? Tears filled Nkem's eyes as she nodded. Yes, Nkene you already are. Nkem's story became more than just a tale of survival. It became a legacy of resilience and forgiveness. She taught the villagers to question their fears, to seek truth before judgment, and to honor the strength of women. Through her trials, she found her voice, her peace, and a new love. Her life was not without scars, but she wore them proudly, knowing they were a testament for her journey. As she watched Shisum run through the fields, laughing with Ekene by his side, Nkem smiled. She had faced death, betrayal, and despair, but she had emerged stronger, and in her heart, she carried the peace she had sought for so long, living happily with her son. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to tune in for another interesting story from Noye Studio. See you next time.